Can, are we recording? Yes. Thank you, Vinland. Welcome everybody out this evening to the local building authority of the American Fork City on this January 26, 2021. I am just uh, going to refer to the, the notice of the purposes why we are met together electronically due to the COVID-19 outbreak and the virus. And we'll move on to the roll call. Uh, board member Chris Jansen is absent. Board member Shelton is absent. Board member Barnes. Here. Board member Carroll. Here. Board member Taylor. Here. Okay, item number two is an approval of the June 30th, 2020 special session minutes. Mayor, I'd move approval of the 20, or June 30th, 2020 special session minutes. A motion by board member Taylor. I'll second. Second by board member Carroll. Um, any discussion on the motion? Seeing none, I'll call for a vote. Board member, um, I mean, boy, I, this is really confusing my order. Board member um, Barnes? Yes. Board member Carroll? Aye. Board member Aye. Taylor? Aye. And for the, again, for the no, board member Chris Jansen and board member Shelton are absent this evening. Uh, item number three, report of the president. I have nothing to report tonight. Um, item number four, I have no unfinished business. Does any member of this, uh, the, the local building authority have any unfinished business? Okay. Item, number, item number five, any new business to be brought before the board? Seeing none, I'd entertain a motion to adjourn. Mayor, I'd move. make a motion to adjourn the boarding building authority meeting. We have a motion by board member Taylor. Second. Second by board member Barnes. All in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? Thank you. You see how I'm already saying out the full motion? I did notice, actually. Wednesday evening? Yes, I noticed. No more so move for me. Uh-uh. Oh, dang it. Okay. We'll now move on to the American Fork Redevelopment Agency on this January 26th of the year 2021. We welcome everybody in attendance. Um, we will follow the agenda as outlined. First up, the roll call. Board member Christy Anson, board member Shelton are currently absent tonight. Board member Barnes. Aye. Board member Carroll. Aye. Well, here. Or here, whatever we're doing. Board member yeah. Taylor. Here. Okay. Um, item number two, and, and I will just state for the record, and I'll probably restate it in the council meeting that due to having three board members at the, on this meeting, that we will have to have unanimous uh, of vote to move it forward. Appointment of a vice chair. Um, I have a, a history of who has been there in the past, uh, and that would be, I was the vice chair as a council member, 2016, 2017 board member, Carol was 2018 and board member Shelton was 2019 and 2020. So, so mayor, I would move that we appoint uh, board member Barnes as the vice chair for 2021. Yeah, I would second that. We have a motion by board member Taylor and a, and a second by board member Carroll. Any discussion on the motion? Seeing none, I'll call for a vote. Board member Barnes. Has to be three nothing, right? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Get where I'm going. Yeah. You're gonna need to step it up, Kevin. <laughs> I vote yes. Board member Carroll? Yes. Board member Tater? Yes. Item number three, appointment of the purchasing agent for 2021. Um, historically in the past, it's been, we've used our purchasing agent. Uh, that would be, the, the last one was, um, why have I forgot his name? Kyle. 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 And so, might make a recommendation that we import a point. At, well, there it is. Uh, it's just, it goes real well to have her in that position. 
So, Mayor, I'd move that we appoint uh, Anna Montoya as purchasing agent of the RDA for 2021. Okay, I have a, a motion by board member Taylor. I'll second that. Second by board member Carroll. Any discussion on the motion? Seeing then I'll call for a vote. Board member Barnes. Yes. Board member Carroll. Yes. Board member Carroll. Yes. Oh, sorry, board member Taylor. Okay. Yes. <laughs> sorry. And again, I'll, just for the record, I'll state that the board members, Chris Jansen and Shelton are both absent tonight. Uh, item number four, approval of the October 27th, 2020 special session minutes. Mayor, I move to approve the October 27th, 2020 special session minutes. Okay, I have a motion by board member Carroll. A second. Second by board member Taylor. Any discussion on the motion? Seeing none, I'll call for a vote. Councilman or board member Barnes. Yes. Board member Carroll. Yes. Board member Taylor. Yes. Okay, item number five is report of the chair on the RDA CRA projects. Uh, David and I have talked about this uh, during the week and I'm going to give David a, some, a, some time just to give some overview. A lot of this will be familiar, but it's um, some good things happening in our RDAs, David. George, would you allow me to share my screen? Could, could you do that? Let me, uh, let me hit my share screen or Vendelin. Okay, let me see what we got here. Okay, hopefully you can see my screen here. Yes. Um, just wanna go through just a couple of uh, reports on, on our RDA CRA projects. Um, we have here a, a list of all of our RDAs and CRAs and the fund balance at ending June 30 of 2020. Um, really the most active EDA we have is Egg Farm EDA. And uh, you can see that uh, we have a, a balance here with the estimated revenue of close to a million dollars for FY 2021. Um, you'll notice that uh, the 1100 South widening project this project right here is a project that will uh, has started, it's commenced, and uh, that will be adding a signal to 500 East and 1100 South and widening 1100 South going into the Egg Farm EDA. Um, another large change here is the LMI housing reallocation, which is the low to moderate income housing reallocation. And that was based on a, um, a action that the board took last year to allocate those housing dollars uh, towards, um, towards our water projects. Mm -hmm. yeah. And so you can see if, if all of our expenses are, are allocated this year in 2021, our ending balance would be 856,422 um, at the end of June 30, 2021. Mm -hmm. Um, so that is where we sit. That is the anticipated fund balance of those projects. And then next year we would finalize the 1100 South project uh, allocated at $540,000. I actually anticipate that the 1100 South widening project will not probably spend the full 1.1 million before June 30 of this year. So um, that will be rolled over into next year's fiscal year, if, if that's the case. Um, oh, sorry, David, are there any other projects that would have um, be incomplete? I'm trying to look on there. That, no, those are the only two projects. 860 East, so will that 860 East is, is, is complete uh, or m mostly complete <laughs> at this point. That was the, the reconstruction project we did. Um, and uh, that's been paved, that road has now been paved. It's a very fine road at this point. It, it was in bad shape before, but uh, we are, we're, we're, we're really done with that. We're just having closeout documents being finalized. Okay. And then um, looking at the egg farm capital project list, we've talked about this in the past, kind of our timing on what year we will do certain projects. Um, so FY 2021, again, the bulk of that is uh, 1100 South widening. 
860 East is, is done now. We did that last fall. Um, so that was in this budget, the FY 2021. And then we had the reallocation of LMI funding um, FY 2022, we would then finalize the 1100 South project. Um, and then we would wait until FY 2024 to uh, do the storm drain system. And FY 2025, we would uh, then consider 1500 South. And 1500 South, as you know, uh, there is the alignment of the vineyard connector coming through there. So there is still some questions to be answered on that, but we have several fiscal years before we probably need to, to land on that. So, so that's our capital project uh, schedule for the egg farm, which is our most active uh, RDA. That's, that's my report, Mayor. Okay. Does the board have any questions? It would be nice to... <clears throat> kind of bring some finish down there where the where the EDA was where the old plant was you know it all converges now into the into the Amazon area too if you go with the the right so it's good to have those funds it's been a very productive RDA or EDA okay any other questions okay is there any unfinished business that we might have for this group I have none no. Okay. Item number seven is, is there any new business to be brought before the redevelopment agency tonight? Nope. Okay. Um, item number eight, do I have a motion to adjourn? I will move to adjourn the meeting of the RDA agency. Okay. Uh, that's redundant. Isn't the A an RDA <laughs> agency? <laughs> we have a motion by board member Carol. Second. Second by board member Barnes, all in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? Okay. All right. We will now begin. <clears throat> we have a public hearing, right? Our, our uh, regular session. As we moved on from uh, uh, RDA meeting to American Fork City Council, this is a public hearing regarding comment on the vacation of a portion of an easement between lot four at 157 South 270 West Circle and lot 128, 248 West 200 South of Serene Meadows subdivision. Is there anybody that is present that would like to make pu public comment we have an anchor location, Tara Lynn. Do I see Tara Lynn? Yes, I'm here. There we you are. Do, the we do not have anyone here to make comment. Public comment. Have you received any, any other public comment via email? No, we have not. For this item. Okay, is there anybody present that would like to make public comment, staff or even council? Okay, we will close the public comment portion and we will move on to our regular session of the American Fork City Council on this January 26th of the year 2021. Um, we will follow the agenda as it is outlined. We we'll begin with the Pledge of Allegiance followed by an invocation by Council Member Carroll and after which I will conduct the roll call. So I will lead out in the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Our dear Heavenly Father, we thank thee this day that we could meet together. We're grateful for the blessings that thou hast given to us. We're so grateful for thy spirit. We're grateful for the opportunity we have to meet together and to govern ourselves. Please bless us with a spirit of understanding and peace. And in the name of Jesus Christ, amen. 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 We'll now conduct the roll call. Um, 
Council members Christy Anson and Shelton, and Council member Shelton are both absent tonight. Council member Barnes. Present. Council member Carroll. Here. Council member Taylor. Here. And as a, a matter of fact tonight with two council members that are absent, uh, on when we get to an action item, even in the common consent agenda, it will take a unanimous vote from all three council members to move it forward. We'll now move on to the public comment period. Um, Carolyn, is there anybody at our anchor location physically present to, that would like to make public comment? No, there's no one here and we did not receive any comments via email. Okay, thank you. We'll now move on to the city administrator's report. David Bunker. Mayor, I have nothing to report tonight, thank you. Okay. Okay, we'll now move on to the council reports. We'll start with uh, council member Barnes. Nothing to report, Mayor. Okay. Council member Carroll. I have nothing to report tonight. Okay. Council member Taylor. Nothing to report, Mayor. Okay. I'm number five of the mayor's report. I would just report that it's been my privilege to participate in a couple ribbon cuttings. Yesterday we were was uh, attended the chamber and other members of the city staff to the truck ranch ribbon cutting. They're right down in the auto mall area, right across the street from Ken Garf. Uh, it was a wonderful event. They're, they've been up for a few months and reported sales are they're doing very well. Um, one other one that I attended, I want to just sorry, I'm gonna refer to my calendar because I can't remember the name of it, but it was a, it was a memorable. I uh, attended a, a ribbon cutting for Cuddles Cat Lounge. And that's over near um, Fresh Market. If you are frustrated at throwing an, you can either throw an ax or go next door and pet a cat. So it's, it's quite, quite a, it's a, but uh, it was fun, but a new business with thought, with great expectations, great aspirations. They take cats that, that were meant to be um, disposed of. They rehabilitate and take them in and find homes for them. They do as well for a nominal fee, let you come in and pet them. I had the privilege of taking my picture and holding what I affectionately called tripod. There was a beautiful cat there that had only three legs. <laughs> so um, but it, it, it's, uh, it's a wonderful new business. So it's one you might just wanna stop by, even if you take your grandkids too, I'm sure they would enjoy it. Or if you like cats, I, council member, um, Chris Jansen was here. I would I would give the floor to her to talk about cats. Um, then one other thing, I and Council Member Carol, I just feel like I have to I have to make a mention of we celebrated a, a centurion that turned uh, he turned 100 years old on Wednesday of last week, and uh, he lives up near the uh, up near the Temple region in that northwest quadrant of our city. And uh, just a wonderful gentleman with a, a, that is so patriotic. It was just, you could just tell from talking to him. He wants to talk about the country. He's a, a, a World War II veteran with a great faculties. His name is Gregory Mont Montagnoli, Montagnoli. Affectionately known by about every neighbor as grandpa is what <laughs> I found out. But we were able to go up there with him accompanied by our fire department and some of our police department present to him a few things that uh, we thought would be fun for him to as a memorabilia of, it, of the special day. I called prior to to make sure just the notion that would he be willing to go a hundred feet one foot for every year of his life and his uh, grand his granddaughter said absolutely he got right in that, that bucket went right up a hundred foot and we just spent about 10 minutes up there with him it was quite fun, Council Member Carroll. Probably something that I'll never forget uh, being up there with him. So um, you only turn 100 once, and we had a lot of fun with him. That is the mayor's report. We'll now move on to the common consent agenda consisting of the three items that is before us. Any questions on these three items? Has there been any noted changes to the minutes? No, I have had no changes. Okay. Mayor, I would move approval of the common consent agenda. 
Okay, I have a motion by Council Member Taylor. I'll second. Second by Council Member Carroll. Any discussion on the motion? Seeing none, I'll call for a vote. Um, Council Member Christiansen and Shelton are absent. Council Member Barnes. Aye. Council Member Carroll. Aye. Council Member Taylor. Aye. Okay, item number one. Um, I, I think that the, you know, Sherilyn, is this something we would want to do individually or can we just collectively do these appointments? What would you suggest? Um, I think it'd be appropriate to do them as individual. Well, I would suggest doing them as individual appointments and that way it leaves room for any um, opposition to an individual appointment. Okay. All right. Um, I'm going to have, if you wouldn't mind counsel, just pick them off one by one. If there's anything that we need to discuss along the way, maybe somebody would like to do that, bring that up first. I'm just wondering if anybody told Chris Christianton that his term ends in 2027. <laughs> so long. So Adam, long. Adam, did you have that assignment? Yes, he wants to remain on. Okay. That's a long time. I noticed those are all reappointments, and I was just so curious why we're doing them all tonight when they have staggering end dates. Um, there were some that were missed last year, and so we're just catching up. It's just to clean up. That's yeah. kind of what I thought. Just want to make sure. That's the same thing on the park tax board. Yeah, um, on both groups. Yep. I'll tell you, it, it's, uh, it takes uh, our secretary I mean, to try to find these uh, any of our committees and keeping them up to task is a lot of work. It's a challenge, yeah. yeah. Sherilyn, I, would I, it I find it just a tremendous head scratcher that Brandon Smith even slipped through all of us. That, <laughs> having known him since he was a young kid, that just, whoa, that was quite surprising. I mean, I won't hold up the wheels of progress, but I'm just, <laughs> of course, I'm kidding. One of the finest people I know. Great guy, Brandon. Well, so sure. Mayor, I'll just go ahead and start. I would uh, move that we uh, approve Chris Christensen and appoint Chris, Chris, Chris Christiansen to the Planning Commission for reappointment term ending 2027. And, and Mayor, before we continue on that, um, if, if, we, if we have an intent of reappointing all of these or appointing all of them, if we want to read them all into a motion, but we need to identify each one in that motion, not just refer to the okay. general appointment. So okay. does anyone does anyone have any issues? And I will make that motion. Does anyone have any issues with any of the candidates? Nope. Not me. Nope. Glad to have them serve. They're doing a great job. Absolutely. I Absolutely. think most of us have had interaction with more than a few of them and uh, and have seen their work and uh, they volunteer their time and they uh, they prepare and do the job they're supposed to do. These are two really good committees. Yeah, the amount of time these people spend is is tremendous. And I, I, along with you, greatly appreciate them. So with that, Mayor, I would move the approval for the following committee appointments. Chris Christiansen to the Planning Commission with his term ending in 2027. Harold Dudley to the Planning Commission with term ending in 2026. Jeff Dupay to the Planning Commission as an alternate term ending 2022. Brian Thompson to the Park Tax Advisory Board with a term ending in 2024. Nan Coon to the Park Tax Advisory Board with a term ending 2024. Nathan Meekum to the Park Tax Advisory Board term ending 2024. Brandon Smith as a new appointee to the Park Tax Advisory Board term ending 2024. Laurel Shelley to the Park Tax Advisory Board term ending 2023, Karen Schack to the Park Tax Advisory Board, term ending 2023, and Scott Oakleberry to the Park Tax Advisory Board, term ending 2023. Okay, thank you for that motion. Second. So I have a motion and a second, and I will call for a vote. Uh, Council members Christiansen and Shelton are absent. Council member Barnes. Aye. Council member Carroll. Aye. Council Member Taylor. 
Aye. Okay. Item number two is a review and action on an ordinance approving the vacation of a portion of a public utility easement between lot four at 157 South 270 West Circle and lot 128, 248 West 200 South of Serene Meadows subdivision. Is there any questions that one might have for our staff concerning this? I mean, I guess same as always, do we foresee, do we foresee a need to have this e easement in the future? Scott, are you there? There he comes. Um, no, this is just really a boundary adjustment as part of the development. So it's essentially vacating it. And then the plat, if I understand right, Adam, Terry, you can correct me if I'm wrong, but the uh, it's uh, easements will still be there just in a different place yeah. where the actual lot lines will be. Yeah, the, this is the, also the subject of um, one of the subdivision plats on the agenda. And so the easements are going to be in their new locations. They're not being vacated permanently. They're just, these old ones are being vacated and then the plat reestablishes the new locations. Oh, okay, that makes sense. Okay. Great. Any other questions? All right, see none, I'd entertain a motion. Mayor, I move to adopt the ordinance approving a vacation of a portion of the public utility easement between lot four and lot 128 of Serene Meadows subdivision. Okay, I'll second. I have a motion by Council Member Barnes, second by Council Member Taylor. Any discussion on the motion? Seeing none, I'll call for a vote. Council Member Barnes? Aye. Council Member Carroll? Aye. Council Member Taylor? Aye. Item number three, A, is a review and action on the final, final plat for Kelton Apartments, phase one, located in the area of 1100 West, 250 South in the TOD, the trans-oriented development. Adam, if you wouldn't mind just kind of leading into the, the purpose that we're, that it's on our agenda tonight. Yeah, thank you, Mayor. Um, this is a subdivision plat for the Kelton Apartments Phase 1. As you stated, it's located in the TOD area um, at approximately 1100 South and 250 West. Um, this one went before the Planning Commission a few weeks ago. Um, you can see it on your screen, and they've got the proposed building placement locations there. At issue with this particular development, um, this is located kind of in the um, outer edge of the core area of the TOD. It does not abut 200 south, it's south of there. Um, and so the TOD code requires um, that there be a, a, an element of mixed use. And so what the code states uh, for this area is that um, basically for all buildings abutting streets other than 200 south, uh, an equivalent of 25% ground floor area shall be designated for office and or retail use. And that's really what um, the focus of the discussion that they'd like to bring up tonight and that was occurred at the Planning Commission. Um, what they're proposing to do is request um, from the council basically a finding that the consolidation of all of those minimum areas for commercial use be located in one location in the development, which is shown as lot one on your screens. So what they've done is they've taken that minimum requirement of 25% ground floor area, placed it uh, into a building that will go on lot one. The planning commission went back and forth on this for quite a while. Um, you have the minutes and I'm happy to answer any questions there, but. They went back and forth understanding the need to um, require the mixed use provision, but then also the realities of market forces and that uh, they, some of them felt that consolidating all of the area to lot one would be more conducive and provide a better commercial viability. Um, and then given the orientation of the development um, to that corner, uh, they felt it would be more usable for the entire neighborhood as it develops out rather than scattered small areas. A comment that was made was um, uh, by one of the planning commissioners was that um, he felt that smaller 
commercial areas located throughout the development might have higher vacancy rates, whereas a larger, more central location would be, would be better likely to be filled and used. Um, so in the end, um, the Planning Commission discussed the, uh, um, they felt there was a little bit of amb ambiguity in the wording in equivalent of 25%. Um, however, in the end, they felt that the code still required it to be in the buildings um, each, I guess you could say each separate building and they didn't feel that they had the liberty to make that finding. And so that's why it came to, or it's coming to you with a negative recommendation. Again, they made a motion. Their first motion was to approve it. It did not pass. Ultimately their motion was to recommend denial. It passed, but it was not unanimous. And so there was a lot of um, just discussion and mixed um, feelings and how this should proceed. But in the end, they felt that that was more of a council decision. Um, although they could support the concept, they just felt that they didn't have the latitude to do that in the zone. And so that's really where we are today. And I know the applicant and his team are here. They would like to speak to you, but um, that's just a, basically an introduction and overview of what happened at Planning Commission a couple weeks ago. Okay. Um, as far as the applicants, we, I would just for public record, we received an email and we will enter that email into our public documents. So just so that it's noted, is there anything that the applicants would have to say that's maybe different than what Adam has described? I know they're here. I believe they would like to speak if, if you'll allow them to. I'm, I'm, I'm open to have them participate. Absolutely. So Richard, are you there? I am here. Can you okay. guys hear me? Yeah. Did you were you able to hear what Adam had to say? I was. Okay. I uh, I uh, um, don't have anything to particularly dispute Adam about to answer your question directly. Um, I I the I do want to note that we looked at this provision right when we kind of started our due diligence ten minutes ago, ten months ago, um, because that is when we. Um, uh, started the process of planning for this development. Um, and at that time, this was a new code provision. Um, so we got together with our team uh, and talked to staff about kind of the intentions. I also actually went through the video of the council meeting um, at the time to try and figure out how to, how to um, interpret this little bit ambiguous code. Um, and one of the things that was specifically discussed at the council meeting uh, was whether it had to be on the first floor or whether um, this provision could apply to second floor. Um, and so the council actually decided not to put a, in a provision that required it to be on the first floor. Um, so it really left that, that language of the equivalent. Um, uh, we felt the equivalent meant uh, how much uh, commercial space you were required to do, not necessarily the location of where it's required to do. Um, so, so that's kind of how we looked at the code um, and, and we conferred with staff quite a bit. I think the goal of the council uh, that we understood was to try to make sure that this area did not become all residential and that you really reserve some area uh, to be able to um, uh, have commercial uh, in this area as it grew. Um, so we really took that to heart and we really designed our, our plan to incorporate, incorporate the com this commercial and try to design it in such a way where it would be successful. Uh, we generally concur with the discussion of the Planning Commission that they, they really didn't feel like having 500 feet in this building and 1,000 feet in this building spread out throughout the project uh, would really create a, a viable commercial uh, entity. And I, I also don't think it would create the kind of livability activity space that a, a centralized uh, commercial corner store feel would, which is what we're going for. Um, I, that's, that's pretty much the deal. Um, I do have my architect here, my engineer here, if there's some specific questions, and of course I can answer questions as well. Okay. You know, I might, um, I might just direct as we talk about you know, the ambiguity of, of the code. I'm going to ask Sherilyn to maybe just maybe interpret what you believe it to be. And, and so we can at least 
um, make sure we're on good ground here as far as the interpretation. It seems like that's what it's coming down to. Would you agree, Richard? Yeah, absolutely. So, so Mayor, um, the interpretation um, and, and the intent is written um, is that each building would have 25% of the ground floor area designated for office or retail. So that would be each individual building. Um, the purpose of the equivalent of 25% was due to um, the, the conversation about the ability to have commercial or office space on the second or third floor of a build, uh, building. It would allow for the residential to be on the first floor and the office space to be on the second floor. There wasn't going to be that restriction of which floor it would be on, but it was a restriction as far as each building had to have that 25%. Um, if the council wants to make some type of, apologies, <laughs> if council wants to make some type of adjustment to that, um, I would recommend that that there be some further conversation and, and discussion. I think the applicant raises some good, good points, but the code as written would be 25% for each building. Okay. Mayor? Yes. Um, okay. You know, I, 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 didn't, I didn't interpret that. I, I appreciate Sherilyn providing that. I, I really appreciate what we, what we tried to do with the code and but I, in, in hindsight, um, and looking at this situation, if I were a small business and looking at some of the other areas in town, for instance, Easton Park, that has retail in, in each building, um, it's not used. And, and I think if, if we, and everyone's going to have their own opinion on this, and I appreciate that, but um, to, to be able to make the best use of what our intent was, and again, this is my mind, but to make the best use of this for the residents and for the businesses, it, it makes sense to me to go down this road that we have everything in one area so that if we had a cafe, um, it could draft off of the business that may come in to the dentist or the baker or bakery or or you know a real estate office or whatever it might be in that area where they plus the parking is centralized and it just makes it a much uh, easier situation for residents to understand where that is certainly it's walkable for for the majority of them but for those who come in specifically for one reason or another there's a place to park i just I, I appreciate the thought, I really do, but the practicality of that in real life is, is such a, I mean, I would love to see that happen. And when this is all built out, that, that may be great, but I still believe that that idea of a corner store and having multiple businesses there, having a designated place to park rather than trying to park on the street or, or park in the residential area or designating spots for that, and actually letting businesses glean off or, or draft off one another for more business, I think that, that we should have the foresight to be able to make that change in this or even just, just change the subtle wording of how it was interpreted, um, it sounds like by our planning staff and what came in question to the planning commission. It just seems to me like that would be the most the, the most logical and and best way to execute this. That's my thought. Okay. Um, other thoughts, Councilmember Carroll. Any thoughts? Yeah, I mean, I talked to Mayor earlier today. I've been circling around this this um, development in my head for the last few days, thinking about different aspects and. Um, I, I thankfully got to talk to Richard earlier today too, but I've talked to planning commissioners and I, I've tried to do my due diligence, trying to understand what would be best. And I, um, I kind of am thinking along the same lines as Clark. We want to make it practical as well as something that we want to do. Um, 
as I was thinking about it, if we have it dispersed throughout every single one of these buildings, and it was only 25%, say the developer chose to do 25%, that would make it a pretty small space and would limit the types of tenants that were um, viable. And I think the reason that we put 25%, the intent was to build in some flexibility, although we do wanna require some commercial still because that's our um, most dense area. Um, I did think about the idea of, and I also like the idea, Clark, that you were saying about the parking, consolidating the parking in one area. It makes sense to me. And I also think, like you said, people will kind of understand this is a commercial, this is a commercial building. Okay, I can go there for that. The only thing that I'm kind of um, wondering about, so I think it's pretty clear that what Cheryl Lynn said is how I would interpret the code as well, that it's pretty clear that it's saying in each building. So if we wanna do something different, I don't know if we, if we can do, I don't know what that would be called. If we have to go back and change the code at another time, we'd have to make another um, meeting for that. But I, I also wondered about having, letting, allowing it to be clustered, but only allowing it on the ground floor and that being an option as well. Anyway, that's kind of rambly, but that was a little bit of where my thoughts have been That's going. how we learn. That's how we learn. May, Mayor, if I could just respond in terms of procedure, um, where the code is as written, um, it would be my suggestion and, and a code revision would have to go back through our planning commission. Um, but this would be a fairly simple code revision. Um, I think that that could go through pretty quickly, um, but I, I would recommend that code revision go back through planning commission and council. Um, Adam may be able to speak a little bit better in terms of the city's procedure as far as applications going forward with code revisions. Adam? Sorry, with which provisions was that, Sharon? How, what, I don't want to speak as to what the city's standard procedure is because um, I'm not certain, but if, if they were to move forward with a code change, um, what would the procedure be to move forward a, an application or a, a plan along with that code change? Um, I guess it would depend on what ultimately is changed. If, if the change is such that it allows the consolidation on the corner as it's shown in this plan, um, and that's kind of the intent that the that is conveyed. Then we would schedule that for as soon as we could, and then probably the court, proper course of action would be to table action on the item tonight, and then wait until that code change moves forward. Bring that back, even if it's the same time as the code change. But or am I off on some different plane right now? <laughs> no, no, I, I don't think so at all. I think that that's one avenue. I, I guess that's why I was referring to you, Adam. I, I don't want to um, recommend a different procedure than the normal, whether we run them simultaneous or we table the action tonight and, and, um, and bring the code change through at a later date. But, but I would indicate that approval of this would be a violation of code as it sits now. So it would have to go back through planning commission. Uh, whether it's a code change uh, or, or otherwise. Well, Mayor, with this direction from the City Council, could, uh, and, and be, depending on how the um, agenda is structured, couldn't they have this code change uh, from the Planning Commission? Or I, I guess it has to come for us for the code change, correct? correct? So it, I was going to say the Planning Commission could then vote on this um, but it's going to have to come back to us no matter what. Well, yeah, that's how, I, that's how I'm interpreting it as well. Uh, and, well, I guess if you want the planning commission not only to do um, to take action on a potential code change, but if you want them to take another action on the item that's before you tonight, I guess you could remand it to them or you could just table it and it stays with you at the council and then pending the outcome of that code change, um, if the planning commission recommends approval of it and this works, then it could be brought back. I think those are two avenues you have. Okay, so I'm, I'm guessing for the developer that uh, time is of the essence, correct? 
Yeah, it really is. And I, I, I'm disappointed to hear from the city attorney that this uh, is, is clear since we did talk about this 10 minutes, months ago with city staff. And, and I felt like we had worked this out with city staff and came to this understanding I, I, of what the code can I just, I just want to add one thing. We never said that this was a guarantee. We said, you're welcome no. to proceed forward with this, but we, but you knew from the start that the code said what it said and it's, it's continually documented in reviews, but we did say we saw that it may have some merit. And so that's why it was moving forward. So no, I, 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 just, I just don't I want there to be the- I understand I'm expressing my disappointment. Uh, <laughs> I, I'm okay, so. going to come after you. Um, so yes, um, uh, clearly we're disappointed if this is the way the council would like to go. Uh, we felt we wouldn't have done this if we wouldn't have felt that an interpretation could have been made in this manner. Um, but if, if it's clear that the council cannot or feels they cannot make this interpretation, um, time is of the essence. We were hoping to start construction very soon and we do have a few approvals in place already. Uh, so if we could get this to planning commission as quickly as possible um, and have them have a discussion about it, that would be fantastic. Okay. I like the idea of just tabling it um, and having the code change go through the planning commission and then come back to us maybe at the next meeting and we can go ahead and approve the code change and then vote on, on this particular um, situation. Yeah. So, so Richard, if you're um, what I would suggest, what I think what would be the best way to move forward is taking it through the planning commission. Normal procedure is that we wait to, uh, for the documentation of the minutes. Mm -hmm. And I think I would, I, I would allow a, just a, a, a summer uh, for Adam to summarize what happened in planning commission that, that will, that will speed this up a little bit for your group. So you're not waiting on the minutes and for us to review them. So they will have a, a, a meeting on a Wednesday and then we will be able to act the following Tuesday on that. And we can. So it may or just, and, and council, um, just for everyone's information, what that would do. And we're happy to do that. The first available planning commission we have so we can meet noticing deadlines is um, the 17th, but then that would turn around if you want that to come to the very next council meeting, that would be um, the 23rd of February. That's given the noticing timelines that we have to follow. That's as soon as we can do that. Does that, Adam, does that include a public hearing for the code. That would be a public hearing at the planning commission. Yeah. But yeah, the, the packets for, I mean, the packets for the meeting on the third are going out Thursday morning and that agenda was sent last week. So um, the next one we have available is the 17th. Okay. That would be fantastic. Hmm? Okay. Just a couple of comments, if I may. Um, hopefully some of these will make sense. Um, I'm not opposed to the project in any way, shape, or form. I don't want anybody to think I am. Uh, my concern is that our attorney, our city attorney, has given an interpretation that I think we somewhat are bound to follow unless we have some real reason not to follow that. So that would indicate we should do it. Um, this plan that's just been talked about, which I would be in favor of. Um, my other, one of my other real concerns is uh, what we used to call in the insurance industry, the slip, slippery slope. Because once you start down something, if you give somebody an exception or an interpretation, then it becomes really hard to stop it in the future. So Richard, I'm more concerned about that being used against the city in the future than I am in this particular project. I personally think the idea of consolidating things into a, a one bigger area is much more beneficial. But I think also some of this stuff is all speculation because we don't know what's gonna happen in 10 or 15 years. Um, but I think the concentration would be better. Um, do you anticipate this being retail or commercial office space or some of both? Um, I don't see a lot of commercial coming in on a second and third floor is, is kind of what I'm looking at. 
Yeah, so so our intention is to have re retail on the ground floor and then office up, up above. We really want an asset for the residential portion in the way of like a bagel shop, an active community space on that ground floor that then is served by the residents as well as a more passive office like a real estate agent or an accountant or a dental office on those upper floors. Or something else, okay. And, and you would anticipate the entire ground floor would be retail. Yeah, that would be the intention. Either one larger shop, restaurant, or two smaller ones is kind of... Some what combination thereof or something. Yep. And we've specifically designed... We don't have a tenant yet, but we've specifically designed the grounds around that space right along a pedestrian path to allow for a sidewalk cafe. So we for can really sidewalk cafe. have that, Good for you. that environment. Um, you know, I, I'm just going to ask the question, and this is not anything to do with your project, I guess maybe just uh, as we talk about slippery slope or precedent, and that is um, we've, had a, we've had other developers that have wanted something similar, but they have been right in the middle of the core, right on 200 South, the, the, the busiest part is the council. And, and Sherilyn, you can tell me if I'm going out of bounds here, but I think it's it's good to note that we're given direction as we consider this one. Are we thinking 200 South is different than being off of 200 South? I think that's something that we could discuss at Planning Commission. I've got some ideas on that, but as far as other projects, we don't have any that are, um, I would say that there aren't any that are in the process that are that far along that, um, that this discussion tonight would affect because a lot of them still need to be annexed into the city. Okay. I do think that's a really good point though. Like if the planning commission is going to make clarification on this, if they could make clarification on 200 South as well to make sure that there isn't as much as possible, there's not ambiguity. And if we, and obviously we do look at them as slightly different and let's define what that is. To me, there's a very clear difference between this and 200 South. Yeah, I would agree. That's just how I envisioned it. Yeah. So. yeah. I did too, or I wouldn't have even really considered this because it's not right on that main 200 South. The other thing, just a personal opinion, what concerns me is, is I hear you've been working on this for 10 months and it seemed like all green light. Now all of a sudden we're throwing up a, a red light to you. Um, we don't like to do that, I don't think, but I think we need to take this, uh, David, with the staff and everybody else that's involved in this, the council, everybody, we need to look at what we're communicating to people and not give any kind of false hope and wait until they've gone as far as they've gone to start pulling plugs. I think we just ought to see these a little sooner if we think there's any potential of a problem. I think Vendelin is pointing out some of the some of the things he's not saying it, but he's using his hand. <laughs> so, yeah, and, and I don't just, think Richard's intent was to, to do, do anything like this. So I um, I think we had good clear direction. You know, Richard, your your team, we will ex, you know we'll do everything we can to get this in front. But even as we sit here and we talk, it's not a guarantee. We still have a process to be followed. And so we don't want to give you false hope, but it looks favorable, but it's not guaranteed until we actually meet back in, in a situation as a council and actually ratify what is recommended by the planning commission. So, all right. Anything else from the council? We need a motion to table this mayor. We need a motion. Okay, yeah. Have a motion to table by council member Taylor. Second. Second by council member Barnes. Any discussion on the motion? Um, this is maybe inherent in the discussion itself, but I would like um, the planning commission to know that they are free to discuss the merits of, of the code recommended changes based on the merits of how it would look in the neighborhood, not based on what they think we would want. Um, I, I would love to hear their opinion is kind of what I'm getting at. So if you want, could just pass that on to them. Yeah. Okay. Uh, Council Member Taylor, just because we're a very formal body, can I have you move to, and just read that out loud, uh, the, the motion? It's a suggested motion, but if you would just maybe use the word table. 
Uh, absolutely, Mayor. I, uh, uh, Mayor, I move to table the final plat for Kelton Apartments Phase 1, located in the area of 1100 West 250 South in the TOD Transit Oriented Development Zone. Um, with the need to go back for, what's the best way for me to put this? Um, with a code interpretation um, for the consolidation of buildings versus the 25% requirement of each individual building, the feasibility of that and including that in the adjusted code. Does that work? Yeah. That's, I think that's direct and to the point of what we talked about. Okay. Yeah, and, and we can make that, um, we'll take that to the planning commission. So I think this was something that if, they- if we, can, if we can get a second on that motion yeah. before we have any discussion. I was gonna, but I couldn't get in. Okay. I'll second it. All right. All right, I have a second. So a motion by council member Taylor, second by Councilman and Barnes. Any discussion on the motion? See none. Uh, Adam, I think you were going to sign summarize it up. I think uh, Councilmember Taylor did a good job and and some direction given by Councilmember Carroll. So yeah, I was just saying we could, we'll take that forward to them. I think that um, they were also looking for some direction um, as far as a potential future code change, which it looks like we are now going to take forward. Okay. All right, I'll call for a vote. Council member Barnes. This is a vote to table it, correct? Correct. Aye. Council member Carroll. Aye. Council member Tater. Aye. All right, Richard, you and your team, we'll, we'll expect to see you back here, okay? Yeah, I appreciate Mayor. the time. Thank you everyone for meeting with me. Yeah. All right. Item number 3B is review and action on the final plat for Shereen Meadow subdivision plat B located at 157 South 270 West Circle in the R275 residential zone. And Mayor, just yeah. just a, can I just ask something on that? Sorry, I, I tried to poke in before, but um, I, I, I feel like I, I feel like this process that we just went through is I, I hope I don't seem um, a bit capricious, but it, it seems to me like this is a pretty natural evolution of this code. And we, we developed this new code and man, if everything would have sailed through perfectly exactly as it was written and, and, you know, we, we believed we took everything into consideration. I really feel like this is a natural process. I don't, uh, I'm not, I'm not bugged. I'm not put off. I'm, I don't think we, but I really feel like this is kind of what we're here to do. And, and we look at things logically, we're able to look at things that have been done in the city before and what appears to not be working. And we're just taking a very conscious approach to what might be better for all parties involved. And so there needs to be a code change. But I mean, that I honestly believe there would be more of that than what we've had. Is that, is that just me? It you know doesn't what? bother. It doesn't bother me one bit that we see things that we need. This is already. A, I know we've done. Well, this is only the second one that I recall, but I I expected it too. I thought that it would happen. It doesn't bother me, and I feel like that there will be more forthcoming as we go. I do think our job is also to remember the intent of things and still try to keep the form of it but try to make some logical sense of, I mean, try to make some logical decisions. That's what I'm trying yeah. to say. And that's where I am. I mean, the unfortunate part is, is the wait for the developer. And I'm, I'm sorry about that, but, but I honestly feel like we're taking this in the right direction as we, you know, kind of look at this and say, Hmm, yeah, there, there, there may need to be a change. So I, I was just wondering if anyone else felt like that. So you know what, I Council Member Carol and I had that same discussion today on the phone. I mean, there is an evolution that might take place, and and we might be you know have a change in mind a little bit. And I think that we have that latitude, and it might make sense. It will be done out of the perspective of what's best for everybody, not just for one person. And so, and this group's really good to listen. So thank you. 
I, I would, just want to say one other thing, and that is as the first developments come through in a new code and you see the application of the project to the code, that will probably raise some questions. And I, I think that's what we're seeing is it's, you know, we're seeing the application of developments in our in this new code. And it's appropriate for the council to say, does this really meet the intent of what we wanted? And if not, then it's appropriate to change it. Yeah. I totally agree with all of those comments. I think they're all kind of on the same line. And I think this is just what we expect. You write the code, but then you don't know what's gonna happen and you have to adjust things as you move forward. Natural process to me. Right, right. That That's that's all I wanted to know was it, it because it felt, I'm not surprised and I, I feel fine about, I, I, again, I'm, I'm, it's unfortunate that people have to wait and, and particularly right now, there's so many unknowns and what's going to happen with uh, a new administration and everything and, and what's that gonna do to costs. I totally get that. I think mayor, you've expeditiously pushed this through. I think staff and, and planning commission will be cooperative, but I just, I feel like it's part of the process. Yeah. I was just wondering, sorry for taking the extra time. No, no, it's fine. Good point. It's good to discuss these things. Okay, we're on to item 3B. Thanks for those comments. Um, any questions for item 3B? If uh, not, I would entertain a motion. I'm so sorry, but could you throw up the plat real quick so I make sure I remember? Oh, yes, of course. Okay. Yeah, I'm happy to put in a motion. If you could go back to it. I move to approve the final plat of Sur for Serene Meadows subdivision for plat B located at 157 South 270 West Circle in the R2 7500 residential zone and to authorize the mayor and city council to sign the plat and accept the dedications with instructions to the city recorder to withhold recording of the plat subject to all conditions identified in the public record associated with the planning commission meeting. Okay. A second. Motion. Motion by council member Carroll, second by council member Tater. Any discussion on the motion? Seeing none, I'll call for a vote. Council member Barnes? Aye. Council member Carroll? Aye. Council member Tater? Aye. Okay. Item number four is review and action on a reimbursement agreement with Whitehorse Developer Developers for system improvements at 1100 West 350 South. Um, there's a lot of good information in the packet. If we want to drill down a little bit deeper for unknowns, we have our, our staff here. Any questions that staff has on these, these improvements? Okay, seeing none, I'd entertain a motion. Just one quick question, Scott. Everything looks okay to you as far as what needs to be done and the prices and everything else. It does. Uh, we've reviewed this and uh, it seems everything seems to be in order and appropriate. With All that, right. then I'd like to make the motion to approve the reimbursement agreement for White Horse Developers for System Improvements along 1100 West and 350 South for an amount no greater than $1,677,509.50. I'll second. I have a motion by Council Member Barnes, second by Council Member Tater. Any discussion on the motion? So you know, we appreciate them doing these things, I think is, is what I was headed to earlier, but it's nice to have working relationships where they do these things and it benefits everybody. Yeah. All right, Council Member Barnes. Aye. Council Member Carroll. Aye. Council Member Tater. Aye. Item number five is a review and action on a reimbursement agree agreement with White Horse Developers for system improvements at 1100 West 620 South. There are some major improvements going along this area. You can't tell. I, I can just speak from how we have met and key staff and talking about these. Uh, these have come up, we've talked about them, we've made sure they're ready, they've been vetted out and then they brought back and they're finally before you tonight. So there is quite a process that our staff goes through to do this. I imagine, I imagine this might be so a lot of work. Yeah. 
Mayor, I'd move to approve the reimbursement agreement for White Horse developers for system improvements along 1100 West and 620 South for an amount no greater than $747,372.32. They get it right to the cent. I was going to say, I'm sure glad that 32 cents is on there. Can you imagine if that was 34? <laughs> Holy cow. Can you imagine? That's just crazy talk. <laughs> All right, I have a motion by Council Member Taylor. I'll second. Second by Council Member Carroll. Any discussion on this motion? Well, if I had my two cents worth in there, it would be. Uh. <laughs> <laughs> you all right? You owe me, Scott. <laughs> I right, will call for a vote. Council you Member two, Barnes. You two plan these out. Aye. Council Member Carroll. Aye. Council Member Taylor. Aye. Item number six is a review and action on a resolution adopting the city's council, city council rules and procedure policy dated January, 2021. Uh, we had our work session on this. Uh, we had uh, made a, a few changes accordingly. Uh, we've had discussions with the council. Is there, if, as you've reviewed the document, is there any concerns that you have that we would like to bring up? Okay. Seeing none, I would entertain a motion. I will move to approve the resolution adopting the city council rules and procedures policy dated January, 2021. Okay. I have a I'll motion second. by council member Carroll, second by council member Taylor. Any discussion on the motion? No, but I do wanna say um, we did the heavy lifting in our other meeting and we're paying the benefits now. Paying the benefits, reaping Re the benefits. Reaping. <laughs> reaping the benefits now. Okay. All right, I'll call for a vote. Council Member Barnes. Aye. Council Member Carroll. Aye. Council Member Taylor. Aye. Item number seven is a review and action on a resolution providing for the continuity of government pursuant to the provision of the Emergency and in, in Interim Succession Act. Um, I will tell you kind of the thought process as I go through this is, is that I think of worst case scenario somewhat probably something of an emergency type situation. And I thought that council member Taylor being the pro tem, but then having people that are close to American Fork typically, council member Barnes in case there is an, some a need and none of it, and we can't be um, contacted that you are a local businessman that's inside the city limits on most occasions. Council member Carroll, we know that you're between here and BYU maybe here all the time with Zoom. But. Yes, mostly <laughs> mostly here all the time. And so, and then heaven forbid we ever really need to enact this, but it's, it is a good practice in this state code. So if there's any questions or that's just the thought process and I would uh, recommend that we follow the motion. I thought you were gonna say, thank heavens or heaven forbid that we would, <laughs> I would fall to Stacy. That's what I was worried you were gonna say here. <laughs> Heaven forbid it would have to fall there, but. Uh... <laughs> Heaven forbid is right. Um, yeah. Not the person, but the emergency. That's for sure. 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 Yeah. Mayor, I would move to adopt the resolution providing for the continuity in government pursuant to the provisions of the Emergency Interim Succession Act. Okay. I have a motion by Councilmember Taylor. Second. Second by Councilmember Barnes. Any discussion on the motion? Either way. Seeing none, I'll call for a vote. Council Member Barnes. Aye. Council Member Carroll. Aye. Council Member Taylor. Aye. Okay. All right. Uh, item number eight is a review and action on an ordinance adopting amendments to the chapter 05.38 of the American Fork City Code regulating the licensing of towing and parking enforcement services. Any questions um, from our packet? Sherilyn, Chief's here to, to answer if there is any. If you would like an overview, we could provide that. So totally what the council would like to do. If, if somebody moves right into a motion, I'll, I'll understand. Sure, I'll move, I'll move to adopt uh, the ordinance approving amendments to chapter. 
5.38 of the American Park City Code regulating the licensing of towing and parking enforcement services. Okay. A motion by Council Member Carroll. I'll second. Second by Council Member Taylor. Any discussion on the motion? Um, just that I had my questions answered between the time we were going to start and the time we actually started. So I'm yeah. good with it all. Yeah, I, I actually had the same questions. So we oh, used our time well, I guess. You're in trouble. We only had two. Yeah, <laughs> for the record, we had two present. <laughs> yeah. Yes. <laughs> Okay, um, I am just, I haven't stated it in the last few motions, but to restate that council members Christy Anson and Shelton are absent. And so as I go through the roll call, motion has been made and seconded. And I'll call for a vote. Council member Barnes. Aye. Council member Carroll. Aye. Council member Taylor. Aye. Okay. Item number nine is a review and action on an ordinance adopting amendments to section 10.46.020 of the American Fork City Code regulating towing and parking operations. Any questions that you might have? Okay, seeing none, I would call for a motion. I'll make the motion to move to adopt the ordinance approving amendments to section 10.46.020 of the American Fork City Code regulating towing and parking operations. Okay, I have a motion by council member Barnes. I'll second. Second by council member Taylor. Any discussion on the motion? Seeing that I'll call for a vote. Council member Barnes. Aye. Council member Carroll. Aye. Council member Taylor. Aye. Okay, item number 10. Do I have a motion to adjourn? Mayor, I'd move to adjourn. I have a motion by council member Taylor. I'll second. Second by council member Carroll. All in favor say aye. 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 Is there any opposed? Okay, we stand adjourned. Thank you very much. Thank you. Sir. Thanks all. Yeah. Have a good evening. That was a good meeting. It went pretty quick. Yeah. Not even one so moved all night long. <laughs> I'll fix that next time.